let's play this clip. This is really funny because this guy had no idea what he was saying or, or how it would be uh, received. What clip number is this? This is clip number four. This is a representative of French Hill, Republican from Arkansas. And he's going up. And he's just not expressing what he thinks he's expressing here when he talks about what uh, his constituents want. Two years, we have lost our way on spending. Printing too much money at our central bank and spending here in Congress like drunken sailors. This bad policy, Palooza, has gone into overdrive in the past two years with some $5 trillion of new spending demanded by President Biden and now delivered by the House minority, whose own budget chair famously said there's effectively no limit to what America can print, borrow, and spend. Of course, this is madness, and it's not anchored in any economic tenet, and there's not a single one of us here that isn't demanding a return to fiscal discipline. And who can deliver fiscal dif dif discipline? Kevin McCarthy. On the point of spending, let me show you a list of everyone who's written me in the second congressional district who's asked me to cut spending. I'm holding up a blank piece of paper. No one has asked me to cut spending in writing. And there are not many people who get a lot of mail in this house to cut spending and to set spending priorities. In contrast, we get hundreds of letters asking us to increase spending. But we're at a critical point in this nation's fiscal health, and there's one person to help see us through it, Kevin McCarthy. I mean, so the guy, <laughs> the guy says that we need to elect Kevin McCarthy to specifically go against the will of my voters. <laughs> He's the guy who'll get that done for you. He'll do exactly what you don't want anybody. Nobody wants him to do. But it also that's shows crazy. the dilemma because that's exactly what the other 20 who are not voting for McCarthy are arguing, too. Yeah. They're, they're all saying, I mean, and do we, Matt keeps bringing this up in terms of like, uh, was the ba what was the uh, the Bacon Revolt? What was it? Uh, yeah, Bacon's Rebellion. Bacon's Rebellion, where Bacon and the governor both said, I'm on the side of the king. Yeah, and they and fought the each other over like who, <laughs> and they're all doing the same thing with Trump. And they're all doing it with like, yeah. we want to be the group that cuts funding despite the fact that we're getting all these letters saying we want we need help in our district no we're going to be the ones who are going to not listen to our constituents and it's like what like what there's no i mean that's the amazing thing about this there's no policy stakes yep. and it almost seems like there's no like even their own voters don't care like on some level like it's hard to imagine like what your typical Republican voter is saying, because there's no outrage about this because w w like they don't care. You know, they vaguely don't like it's 50 they're not even 50 50 on on McCarthy. They don't care that Congress doesn't do anything. No. That's why they all elected uh, Donald Trump. They didn't elect Donald Trump to do stuff other than to tear stuff down in government. I mean, it's just like the the. The, the people driving the car, the, the car's not moving. No. And so it doesn't matter who's got the steering wheel. That's basically it. it. Not. Well, what they want, I mean, I do think there is something they want. I mean, they are enjoying the, the insurrection caucus sticking it to Kevin McCarthy that, because he's a rhino. And, you know, they don't even know what that means in terms of policy. They don't care. It's just he's been designated a rhino by, you know, others and you know this is what got bubbles up in right-wing media and on their message boards but mostly what they want to do is own the libs that, that, that that's it <clears throat> they just want to make people you know they just want to take down the the democrats and you know liberals and the woke and you know the all of those constituencies that that's what they live for that's all there is to it i just don't think that they have any of this that's what politics is to them at this point and so these guys like kevin like uh matt gates or you know bobert or the rest of this 
crazy crew, uh, they, they're, they're fulfilling that because they're showing that they don't care about anything but that either. Uh, and I don't even think they really care about that. It's a means to an end. They just, this, they're just, you know, chaos agents, anarchists who just like to just cause trouble. They're, they're, there's no real, they don't have an agenda that they're trying to, 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 you know, produce for anybody i mean they're just they're just doing this because they can um it's it's very it's anarchistic really it's just this this idea of just i'm just going to make trouble because i can make trouble and the people i'm making trouble for are the people that my constituents hate uh they don't like rhinos and they don't like democrats and this is what i do this is my job and the thing is is that here's the one thing that's really important to remember about this the rest of the party, they, you know, you look at these 20 and they're the ones who have the most balls, right? They're just, they've got the, they're just out there doing it. The rest of the party isn't really any different. They don't, and it's not like they've got a big agenda. It's a, I mean, Mitch McConnell ran in the last election saying, we don't have an agenda. We'll tell you what we're going to do once we get in power. The, the, the last platform they produced was just like, we like Donald Trump. Whatever Donald that Trump was. That was yeah, the platform. Mean, what he, says, you know, what but, he said, that's, that's their platform. So I, they're all, they're the same way. They don't have anything going on. I even, I, I would even like, I would even con- contend that they're, the reason why, like, I, I, I don't know, I, you know, maybe I'm not looking in the right places, but I don't even see any real engagement from Republican voters in this. Like, I'm not seeing, like, you know, we're, we're seeing the Fox people hem and haw about it. Like you say, they're so ambivalent and confused. But, like, I'm not seeing any, like, major, you know, weighing in on this by anybody on the right, because I think... So on the contrary, all of them want to own the libs, but there's no lib owning no going on. Owning. <laughs> and, and, and really, it's only like the, the Democrats are just getting the opportunity to like applaud. And I feel like the Republican like voter has completely disengaged from this. They don't care. They're just waiting for the lib owning to happen. They're waiting and for the hunter, the laptop. Exactly. From hell. And, and they're they just not, they're just not engaged. I mean, it's yeah, it, I agree. like, I think like this is, this is one of the most like telling sort of distinctions between the, the, like the Republicans and the Democrats, because, you know, like someone just said, like, uh, ask me on, on, I am like, is there any uh, democratic equivalent to the speakership debacle? No, because the Democrats go in and, and, and you and I can take issue with the agenda. I, many times we do. More often than not, it's because it's not uh, aggressive enough or, or expansive enough. But they go in with an agenda when they take, uh, the, when they take the House. They go in with an agenda. I don't know, Nancy Pelosi, like, passed you know, uh, under her leadership. And I, again, you and I have, we're, we're, would have liked a different speaker, but they passed a bunch of legislation. Like, like I don't know, like it was like hundreds of hundreds of bills, yeah. uh, not the least of which was, you know, a $2.3 trillion uh, American Rescue Act. And um, th- there was a tremendous amount of pressure to get to work, right? I mean, like, because and if they didn't they were screwing up things and there's none of that here it's just it's fascinating Uh, i i mean there there is no and that's why i gotta say like it seems to me this could go on for a long time i mean because they can't find a consensus candidate and this is why i think they can't find a consensus candidate because if there is any signaling to the 20 that there is a consensus candidate, they will not cave. Right. right? I, I mean, even if they, if there is like overtures as to what would you do, like what consensus candidate would you be in favor of? They will not cave because they'll know that they can win. Yeah. And McCarthy now, maybe there's somebody somewhere in the caucus who's going to secretly go and negotiate with them at this point and come up with a caucus. Like maybe Steve Scalise is sneaking out of meetings. I don't know, putting like a, 
like a, some type of cloak over his head, if you will. <laughs> like maybe like some type of like, you know, like white sheet to hide in and then sneak over to yeah, talk weird. to weird. Did you think of Steve Scalise in a white sheet? I can't yeah, imagine. No, I just, I'm just thinking like, a, you know, some type of cloak. And he goes over and talks to them and says like, I'll do it, guys. But they're, they're, they can't really afford to float a, a consensus candidate at this point because... And, and who would take it? Who would take it under the Kevin McCarthy terms? And why would the 20 give any other terms beside those at this point? I mean, it's a really weird situation that could be like really protracted, uh, it seems oh, to absolutely. me. absolutely. And then the only, the only way I see out of this is that you get um, enough members leave, like a couple go home, and then out of that 20, five or six, or what What was the number that we figured out was the total number that we needed? Was it like 16? Uh, it was, so 218 is uh, how many McCarthy needs to, to clinch, but he, and so he can't lose five. So, so five would go over, you know, uh, uh, he needs to bring down the numbers, but it can, if, if the people were to vote present, that would, that would, yeah, if that 15 would bring it of these people went over, and voted for him and then one or two voted present right. he could win right uh, somewhere around there like he doesn't he just has to get more than 2012 uh, 212 which is what jeffries is getting and then they have to bring down that number down the the overall number to like 226 that are voting so they gotta you know nine people have to four people can leave because they got to deal with their family and five of those holdouts the 20 holdouts can vote present and they don't have to vote for mccarthy and then uh, you know, uh, the 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 rest vote for McCarthy, and that's it. But just as an update, well, we this round there have been ten defections back. Oh, to oh, McCarthy. Really? To McCarthy, there have been about ten defections back, but there are still seven voting for either Jim Those Jordan the or Kevin Hearn of of Oklahoma. Okay, so, so that still, it's it, still going to fail. So it's ten have gone back. So is that two eleven to two twelve? Yes, it, it's still going. There's the there's still votes being read out, but they, it's ten have gone back, including Scott Perry, the Freedom Caucus okay. chair. That's interesting. Okay, so um, they may get to 212. Yes. The idea is if they get to 213, then all they need to do is the other people, the deal would be you just vote present. Right. And, and then he wins. Well, remember, uh, Democrats can vote present too. And they can leave too. If there's some vote counting like going on and there are people in the Democratic caucus who are monitoring this, or maybe there's, they've got a mole in the Republicans or whatever who are you know, being able to suss out the plan, they can counteract that. By, by no, they can't it. counteract it because if they leave, then the number goes even lower. His threshold becomes even lower. It is it is all based upon the number of people who cast votes. Oh, I see what you're saying. Okay. And so if they leave or vote present, they will actually lower the threshold for McCarthy to get the majority. Um, now, maybe they'll do that just because they want to go home too. And they don't want to be seen as voting for McCarthy, but maybe... I think a present know. vote is a vote for McCarthy. I don't think they get away with that. I think they'll be held responsible by the, by the wing nuts if they vote present. But, they, but, you know, they can go out and say to the cameras, look, this is what I got. I got the chairmanship of the oversight committee or something. So, you know, it was don't worry, we'll take care of Kevin. That's part of the benefit of doing this deal. Because even though, we've, as we've discussed... All of that is for real. It was going to happen anyway, because right. they have, they, as they've shown, they don't have to have a committee chairmanship to do what they're doing. They can do all this stuff without any kind of a formal agreement. But having a formal agreement gives them a way of saying, we didn't capitulate to anything. Right. We got this, you know, and it's in writing and, you know, it, his word is like oak and, you know, we'll do that. So th they can do that. Um, and maybe that's really what their plan is. And, you know, it's sad and pathetic for Kevin McCarthy um, because it means that they had to actually, you know, he had to deal with people by saying vote present um, so, so that I can lower the threshold so I can actually win. And somebody yesterday on TV, I can't remember who it was, but somebody mentioned the idea that these people are so bad at counting that it's possible that they might accidentally vote in Hakeem Jeffries by mistake. Well, I, I, I honestly <laughs> no, think that happen. like that is not, that is not inconceivable. Uh, I mean, it really isn't. Uh, they, they could get the things wrong or like, 
you know, one member of the house could be like, I I've got to go. My kid is sick. <laughs> or honestly, like, I mean, right. we've got these, like, I want to go see my mom's funeral and I'm not sticking around for this anymore. And I'm just going to go. And they may not tell anybody. And it could happen. Or you could get into a car accident on your. You, you went down to, you know, I don't know. Went out to lunch and came back, and and somehow you get delayed, and yep. the vote happens, and you're not there. I and, mean, this and, is how tight it is that that could happen. And when you get into votes twelve and thirteen and fourteen, it's not like somebody's going around and making sure everybody's no. present in this moment. And so, uh, you know, it, it, it'll be interesting to see. Um, Heather, I, I have a feeling we're going to be. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know if we're going to be talking about, about this again the next time you come on, but it's possible. <laughs> it certainly is possible. It is certainly possible. Oh my God! You know, one thing. You know, Kevin McCarthy. They, the, the, the. I can't remember who it was. Yesterday, I maybe it was Bob Robert Cost on CBS pointed out that what this. Oh no, it was it was Chad Pergram who said that um, basically the deal that they're making is to make the Speaker of the House a ceremonial position. Yeah. And I thought, wow, Kevin McCarthy. If that is a perfect legacy for him, you know, it's the most one of the most powerful jobs in the world, really. I mean, the Speaker of the House. It's it's one. Of the, it's certainly one of the most powerful jobs in the U.S. government, and he's turning it into a ceremonial position. Up still formally. third in line. Still third in line to, uh, oh, God, to be president. Us. So God help us. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, uh, okay. Heather, always a pleasure. Thanks happy for Happy New me. Year. Thanks happy for coming on, starting the year off. All right. Absolutely. All right. See you another time. Another time.